Welcome back. We have to continue. Time is a little bit limited, so I need to, to do it correctly here and finish everything I want to say. Uh, obvious, when we go to the marriage enrichment seminar later in the year, uh, we talk about this stuff a little bit deeper, more focused on couples. So my purpose here tonight is more to, to focus on the biblical principles and what we need to understand what God is saying concerning that. And uh, so we were busy with talking about uh, the responsibility that husband and wife has to each other when you are married, that's your job. That's part of your responsibility to make sure each one is fulfilled. Verse 7 says, I wish that all men were as I am. Many means also ladies. But each man has its own gift for God. One has a gift, another has that. Um, now he's talking about the gift of celibacy. The ability not to marry. Now some of you, there's a lot of singles here. And, um, and I know a lot of you don't want to be celibate. <laughs> so uh, you don't want that gift. Obviously it's available. Um, <laughs> But I know that uh, some of you are praying for husband and wife. Um, I remember down there in Cape Town with our group there, our church down in Cape Town, uh, with Eben, who's our pastor there, he, he said to me the other day in front of a lot of the people, he said, we have a lot of singles, ladies. There's a lot of singles, as men also. He said, but I've checked them all out. If I, I was a man, I will not choose one of them. They all look like gray, you know, they are clothed like colorless, um, visionless, ambitionless human beings. I mean, they don't look like beautiful women. <clears throat> and he's, he told them openly, you will never get a husband. Do something. You look like a scrapyard, you know. <laughs> Just do something. Men don't look like... A, to a dry rose or something that's dried out. He wants to see something that's beautiful. I mean, make your hair beautiful. Put some makeup on. <clears throat> Get the fat off. Look after yourself. I mean, a man doesn't want that. Now, I know I, I, I'm very frank now, but um, I want you to understand. If you can't expect to get a husband or a wife, then look like something that's really confused. Creepy crawly and uh, fall down. <laughs> so sort yourself out. God has given you ability to make your personality beautiful. You better be beautiful. Look after yourself. Inside of you is the most beautiful person. Let that beautiful person inside of you come out. God made you perfect, beautiful. So there's no excuse to look different. Work on yourself and all right, that was just by the way. Verse 8. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say. It is good for them to stay unmarried as I am. Enough for some of you. And again, but, big but, if they cannot control themselves, some, some of you, if you cannot control yourself, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. I don't know who's voluntary, who's that. Uh, but you hear the principle here. Because if you are aware of who you are, you are a normal woman and man, and you, you realize that you, you, there's a calling and you want to be married, obviously you pray for that. You trust God for that. And you prepare yourself to get married. Then, verse 36, if anyone thinks that's now the husband, he is acting, or not the husband, the young man, improperly towards the virgin, that's now the girl that he's dating he, he, or engaged to, and if she is getting on in years and he feels he ought to marry, he should do it as he wants. He is not sinning. They should get married. Obviously, there was a lot of issues in those years that people say don't marry. It's illegal or unbiblical. And Paul said, man, if you like each other and you, you want each other and there's sexual attraction, sort everything out, get married. And that's actually the message. Uh, get married if you have the right person because it's fun, it's fulfilling, and it, it makes your life so much more enjoyable. 
except for those who have the gift. Those who have the gift of singleness don't need that joy. All right, let's go on. You still here? You still love me? The purpose of sex. All right, maybe before we get to that one, there's just that one scripture. Um, Proverbs 5, verse 18 and 19, it's so beautiful. Um, that's one that husbands can sing for their wives often, um, just to remind them. Uh, let, let's blessings be on your fountain. A fountain is actually the symbol or the words that, that Solomon used for the sexual relationship. He said, let your fountain be blessed. Have joy in the wife of your early years. So in, in Afrikaans, it also say the wife of your youth, the one that God gave to you when you were young. Enjoy her until the day of old. Enjoy until you are 85 and 95. I mean, enjoy life. Looking forward to that. I just told Tisa this week, and we are married 32 years. I said, we are not even halfway yet. Um, there's so many years. I'm just thinking all, all the fun. Verse 18. <laughs> Let blessing be on your way of 19. As a loving hint, or hint and a gentle doe, let the breast ever give you rapture. Rapture means, not the rapture that some of you have in mind, <laughs> excitement. That, that's what it's all about. Let your passion at all times be moved by a love. Another translation says, let the affection fill you at all times with delight. Be infatuated always with a love. Now this is powerful scripture. It means men, you only have eyes for your wife. You are sexually activated, not through the TV screen, but through your wife. You don't watch the, the porno to say, all right, now I'm excited enough to tackle my wife. It says you get excited because of your wife herself. The fight is in here. The devil will try to dump rubbish in here. And I know how men is operating. They're sleeping with their wives, but actually with their neighbor. Because she's inside here. And this scripture says, your wife must entice you. She must be the one that excites you. So wives, the responsibility is that you must be that. And uh, make, be excited or exciting. And uh, make sure that you are doing that. Now at the marriage seminar, will, Tisa will tell you more about what to do. Purpose of sex. To demonstrate God's Unity, spirit, soul, and body. Now, it's a unique way that God, I mean, only God could think about something like that. Uh, that he created human beings to do this funny thing. And said he's good. And he made it for two people to be spiritually, your soul, your body, relationally, be fulfilled. And when we get to the marriage seminar, Tisa will tell the ladies, and the men applies to us also, uh, sex is actually one of the best medicines in life. It actually heals you from the inside. And, and it, it, it beautifies a lot of functions in your body. I'm talking about God's type of sex. Sex outside of marriage will destroy you, will cause you to become sick. It will actually destroy everything in your life. Except for some sickness and demons that will jump on you, it will just eventually destroy you totally. But in marriage, where God's blessing is, you will prosper. And God will bless you and even heal you. Sex is a symbol of unity. It is the confirmation of the covenant between two people that God brought together. It's so beautiful. It's the, 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 the uh, communion that we have you know, in church or we come together, celebrate communion. Sex is celebration of the communion of two people together that becomes one. Sex is for delight and pleasure, physical and spiritual fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. Um, there's nothing in the world that fulfills someone so intensely and so deep than a fulfilling sexual relationship. There's just nothing. Not food, nothing. I'm not talking about God. I worship to God. That's a total another dimension of fulfillment. But, but God has given sex. It's the greatest single experience on earth that is above anything else that God created. And therefore it's so dangerous because it will destroy you if you don't use it in the presence of God. 
It will completely destroy you if you don't use it to, to honor God. But God has given it to you for fulfillment of life. Get rid of stress. That's part of the healing. What, that's what sex is causing in your life. It keeps you dependent of your spouse, your mate. And give you godly descendants, beautiful children that will follow Jesus. Now that's just some or most of the purposes of sex. Then just something about the power of sexual drive. Solomon actually warns us. Now it's a pity that um, it's being written there. I, I think that some of the stuff being written there was written by his father David. Uh, for Saul, Solomon. If you read uh, the, the songs of Solomon uh, in the Pro Proverbs, I think David had a lot of, of things he said to his son Solomon, don't get involved with women. If you read the first few chapters of, of Pro Proverbs, Proverbs, you will see a lot of word is being given there. Stay away from the street woman. You can get a prostitute for a piece of bread. And I think David was writing it to his son. And even some of this that's been said, because Solomon eventually destroyed his life completely through women. You can read it in the Bible. God withdraw from Solomon. And he was this great man that God gave wisdom and made him the most powerful leader of that nation. And at the end of his life, it says, God withdraw from Solomon because women cause Solomon to worship other gods. And women can destroy you. Just think of... Of, of Samson. Samson was called to, to, to destroy the Philistines. And he was sleeping with the Philistines. He tried to marry one. And then that one was taken away. And he tried to marry another one. The, the Lila. And there he was. You know the whole story. He was sleeping with the enemy. Those who know the, the movie. Sleeping with the enemy. I mean he was called. He had this calling. Destroy all the Philistines. And now he was marrying and sleeping with them. And uh, women can destroy men if you are not spiritually Holy Spirit controlled. Woman has the power. Sex is very powerful and woman will use it against you to destroy you completely. And some women discover the power in sex. And that's what they are doing. The prostitutes and many women out there that are using their sexuality, the spirit of lust, to control men. And it's fun for them to control the men through spirit of lust. And, and, and women will know that because men is, is so strongly sexually wired that it's easy to control a man through sexual things. And there's a big difference between a wiring of a man and a wiring of the woman. Not going into the detail of that, but a man's sexuality is in the outside as his thoughts patterns. So a man is very far more... Of, and, and aware of his sexuality than a woman. A woman is not. She's aware of love and romance and all the atmosphere and things. A man is very much aware. I mean, most men have up to six erections per night, even in his sleep. And a woman doesn't know what that is. And men have to live with that. I mean, women think men is totally cuckoos. I mean, God made you totally disorientated. I mean, and woman does not know that feeling or that function. And therefore, you need to understand men. You have to understand your little boys, your little sons growing up. I mean, even as little ones, they have erections. And they will touch themselves. And most mothers will say, don't touch you, that will fall off. And they, they don't know how it works. And they don't know, know what to teach their children. And obvious at the end children think this is filthy. This is from the devil. God will kill me if I touch myself. And we are creating a lot of rubbish. And your children are deceived. And then they end up with all the wrong stuff. And they're doing it the wrong way. And they don't understand what God is saying. Instead of teaching our children the right stuff. And get them out of guilt and Bring it into the understanding. What is Father saying? What's God's purpose for our lives? In the Song of Songs, it says, For love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field. Do not arouse 
or awaken love until it so desires. Don't awaken it. Because it's like a running car down a hill. You can't stop it. When you start awaking love, sexual love, you can't stop it. That car will keep on running. I mean, the brakes will, won't work, nothing will work. It will just run. And that is what our young people need to understand when we educate them about, you know, relationships. And therefore, we need to teach our children how to, to build relationship between a, a guy and a girl so that they won't end. Most relationships end into sex after one day, after two dates, because... Children don't know how to work this because what they see in TV, they think that's what they should do. Now, we are near to the end of what I want to say tonight. Next week, I'm going to continue with the topic that's even more dangerous than tonight. Now, I'm starting with the topic on masturbation. I don't like the word, but there's just nothing else. Self-sex. And to explain, because why do I touch on that? And then we're going to talk about other sexual dysfunctional. People having sex with animals, things, distorted. There's so many distorted things. And we're going to touch on, on, on some of the dysfunctional things with people. What we see, what we find in counseling. I mean, sometimes I'm shocked to hear what people are telling me in counseling sessions. And uh, people are I mean, try anything. And many people are abused sexually from little children up. So they are sitting around you, maybe yourself. And we, we were exposed to this. We are all sexual beings. God made you a sexual being. And unfortunately, you were raised among a lot of sick people. Even your mother and father might look nice, but many times they, they were also dysfunctional, either sexually or in other ways. But uh, because of that, they put that same dysfunctional spirit on their children. And uh, now the children becomes either lustful or frigid. It's a pendulum effect. You are either on one side, you become a lustful person, you want to have sex with everything. Anyone that comes to you, it's the ladies will use sex to get attention. Men will use sex because they don't know how to, 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 to manage themselves. And uh, either you swing to the other side, you become sexually totally frigid, cold, passive. And... Passive, sexual passive passivity is the same sickness than lustfulness. You, you are, it, it's birth in the roots of pain. And there's things deep inside in your life that actually distorted your sexual identity. And God wants your sexual identity to be complete and healed. And it's stuff that we can't talk normally with one another, but in a setting like this, you know, I want to tell you, you need to open your heart. And when we have the seminar on, sexual, on, on, on uh, character restoration, our seminar coming up, and those who listen, please do the seminar. I will specifically pray for people, and we're going to do it as a group, people who went through sexual abuse. And we want to, I want to release God's healing into every area of sexual abuse, of sexual things that you've experienced. And uh, some of the abuse is just uh, the absence of education. If your parents never ever educate you, you are actually abused the other way around. My mother and father never educate me. My mother gave me a little booklet in Standard 5, and I still did not read it up to now. And it's a little book that go, it's about, I mean, I, I started to read it so I know what it's about, but it's a little stupid book, but I kept it just for the sake of it. You know, it's about the boy climbing a mountain. And then halfway the mountain, he slips and he falls down and he has to climb again. And I couldn't understand the story. Then, then one day I realized it's about masturbation. The moment you touch yourself, you're falling off the hill. And I realized it's a, it's a bunch of crap, rubbish. And that's the only education my mother gave me. Because she suspected there's something going on, you know. And they didn't have the guts to, to, to teach you or talk to you and help you. And normally, you know, because parents are not functioning well in their own sexual relationship, they don't have the liberty to share with their children. 
And what parents are is actually they invest that in their children. What I am, my children will become. It's not what you say is what you are. You invest your own dysfunction in your own children, and they become also dysfunctional because of you. Now next week we're going to talk about this funny thing of self-sex, then a lot of other things. The week after that, interesting thing that happened a lot around us, family, friends, homosexuality, um, and why people are ending up in that. Because there's healing for all of them. Complete healing, complete restoration, but we need to understand why it happens. And we are living in a world where, where everyone shouts and thinks it's acceptable, and God says, no ways, come here, I want to heal you. I want to restore you. Let's close in the next few minutes. How do I manage my sexual drive? Number one, <laughs> pray a lot. If you are not married, uh, you better manage. Remember the word I use here is manage. You, don't, you can't hope that it will disappear. I remember as a young guy when I actually became a Christian, I, I felt you know, uncomfortable with my sexuality. And I, I felt I'm in sin because I'm a sexual being. And because of that, I, I, I said many times to God, Lord, just take it away. <laughs> you know, and, and, and God won't take it away. Because he wants to teach you how to manage. It's like sitting with a plate of food. You eat only the healthy food. You don't eat so much, you only eat this. You manage your food, your, your style of diet and eating. And life is all about management. It's about doing the right things and get rid of the wrong things. The sexuality the same. There's stuff inside your sexuality that you need to understand and accept with God's presence and know that his blessing is upon you. And therefore, you need to pray in relationship with him. Secondly, respect your sexuality. And if you marry the sexuality of your spouse, we are sexual beings. And God created us beautiful to operate as sexual beings, maximum to fulfill life, actually to extend life. It's proven over and over those who have a happy, fulfilling sexual relationship live longer, healthier, less heart attacks or less lower blood pressure. Um, just everything is more improved for people who are healthy in this. Respect your sexuality. It's a gift from God. It's not a curse from the devil. Respect your sexuality. It's a beautiful gift God has given. Now I have to, to protect it. It's like me coming to you and I give you a very fragile little gift. Something that can break easily and I put it in your hands. Now you protect it. You keep everyone away that it won't break. Because it's so special. You keep that because you want to, 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 to keep it forever. And that's what our girls must understand. And boys, my sexuality is something I need to protect. It's so fragile. And 99% and of people are sexually abused before they get married. They say, that's the statistics, they say 70% of women, 7 out of 10 is sexually abused before they get married. If I take it with you, seven out of ten out of you sitting here is being sexually abused as little girls or young girls before you got married. And we are talking about a very big issue here. That's why I spent some sessions on this. And a lot of men, I remember one of my best friends, I, I took him through a season of healing. And he was abused by a homosexual for many years as a little boy. I mean, they've raped him over and over as a boy. And, and I mean, he, he never shared that with anyone until the time was ready that we could minister to him. And there was a lot of demonic things, and God delivered him. And, and I mean, he's a beautiful, dynamic father today, beautiful kids, and doing very well. God healed him totally. But it happened to men and women. It's all over around us. God wants you to, to, to really respect that. That's why we need to teach our children from small, you are a sexual being, and God has given you those things that will honor him one day, and they need to understand the basics of that, in terms of that, love yourself, if you don't love yourself, how can you ever love your spouse, and honor other people, and their sexuality, protect your mind, warfare is here, it's not somewhere there, it's here, 
It's, it's every, I mean, fantasies, things come here. Men, we are fantasy driven, more, far more than women. Very few women are bothered with fantasies or have problems with that. Men, most of us, I mean, you're operating with fantasies, pictures, things you have here. And, and women cannot always understand that. That's why we, I mean, we are sexually activated by what we see. And you just see a sexy girl or leg or something. I mean, you are sexually activated in one second, even less. I mean, women don't understand that because they take a long while. <laughs> but men is like an electric light. You switch on and it's there ready. And women is more like that old coal stoves that you have to <laughs> put on and <laughs> work it, you know. And, and, but when it burns, it burns, you know. <laughs> we are totally different. We need to understand each other. And that's interesting that God will come and he take a man with his way of operation and a woman with her way of operation and make us one and he said we must be patient with one another we must understand we must minister and and care for one another while we are differently totally differently but warfare is here especially for the men we have to fight it here jesus said if you lust after anyone else in here you've done the damn thing you are sleeping around in your mind it's Exactly the same as if you are doing it. So in here I have to protect my mind. I'm not ever sleeping with anyone else except my wife. In here. My thought patterns, my fantasies, everything in here is just the one God has given to me. I must protect this. I cannot allow anyone to come in in, in, in the fantasies that I have with anyone else. And there's psychologists, even some Christians going around and say it's okay to have fantasies with other people. I say, no. God says, no. It's not acceptable. Dedicate your sexuality to God. Do it this. Say, Lord, thank you for this gift. I just give it back to you. Help me to worship you with my sexuality. Help me to use this and, and to, to honor it as a gift in my life. Get healed from hurts and mistakes that you've made. There's not one of us that's not hurt or had a mistake in this area. We need to get rid of it. Make that decision. Men, find a man counselor who can help you. Ladies, find a lady counselor. Ladies, don't come to me. I don't counsel ladies. And I teach my men, my leaders, not to counsel ladies. Ladies don't counsel men. So uh, we, we keep that. I get sometimes people phone me just this week. A lady wants me to counsel. I said, you can go to my wife, it's fine. No, I want to see you. No, you can go to my wife. Okay, in that case, it's fine. All right, just leave it. Just leave it. I don't counsel women, not at all, except if my wife is with me. I'm, I'm too long in this business to know how it's working. And I'm counseling too many pastors that's in affairs. So I don't allow that for me and any one of you. Renew your mind with God's word. You need to know what God is saying. Because the more word, the more spirit, the more you can manage your sexuality. In the presence of God, it becomes easier and easier. Get delivered from sexual lust demons. A lot of people have really a problem with lust. And it's not only a mind thing, it's a demon thing. And sexual, if you got involved with pornography or sexual stuff, you've picked up last demons and therefore you need to get deliverance of it otherwise that stuff is going to to burn inside it will draw you to stuff that you will destroy you and i'm saying it to all of you young people um, if you are burning with desire all the time this thing is controlling your mind your life half of that is demons are demons uh, the rest is your own emotions and feelings get ministry get deliverance don't go on because it will destroy your life. You will end up in relationships and stuff that you not ever wanted to be in. Develop a healthy sexual sexuality through knowledge and self-discovery. We need to study. We need to read. For those of you who are married, I really want to motivate you. 
There's, there's an excellent book that I've offered on our website for you. Uh, I will just make sure with my, my son that it's available. Um, it's actually linked to another website on, on everything you want to know about sex. It's free. It's a powerful, practical book, but it's just for couples. It's too practical for singles. Uh, singles won't make it. Um, it's a very beautiful, practical Christian book. It's, a, it's Christian. It's a couple who wrote it. It's really powerful. They've written a lot of books. But I've given you the link because they gave it the one book, this one. They give it free on download. You can download it on the web. It's a powerful book. You can sit and read it to husband and wife on your laptop or print it out. And uh, just it's really a, an easy reading, powerful book. It's answering all the typical questions we have. May I do this? May I do that? Wear that? Wear that? All those typical things. It's on our website, and you can really uh, get that link, and I will just make sure that it's accessible. If you can't get it, speak to us. Develop a maximized sexual relationship and intimacy with your spouse. That's for the married people. For the unmarried people, the singles, widows, um, you have a few choices. You pray for the gift. You pray for husband and a wife. <laughs> Meantime, you have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has, is the spirit of self-control. So the Holy Spirit gives you the inner ability to manage. It does not necessarily mean your sexuality will disappear, but you will learn how to manage it. It will, it will not control you, you will control it. And you need through the Holy Spirit to manage it. I know, especially for single men, it's, it's more difficult for those guys who are not married to stay pure, stay focused, um, especially if you've been in a sexual relationship before and now you're suddenly not in that. It's really, it's, it, it takes very commitment and love for God and commitment to what God wants to stay pure, not getting involved in anything and uh, stay in the presence of God. And uh, next week I'm talking about um, whether masturbation is acceptable or not. And I'm very radical on this, so wait for next week. <laughs> and uh, I want to um, help you. I know there's some people who don't like what I'm saying. Um, I'm sorry for that. But uh, I believe I'm saying what God is wanting me to say. So I, I will keep on communicating. And, um, so, um, all right, I want you to, in your groups, just pray for one another before you go home. Uh, just share a little bit, in a minute or two, if there's anything that the group can pray for you, just stand in the group, you can stand or sit, just pray for one another quickly before you go home. Bless you, in Jesus' name, until next week.